All right, everybody. Thanks again for joining in and tuning in to today's Facebook Live session. I'm Jeff Roberts. I'm a conservation educator here at the Salado Wildlife Education Center. And today, as you can see, we are at our bald eagle exhibit. You just got some uh, good looks at our resident bald eagle. We're going to talk about him in just a little bit. But first, the theme of today is the bald eagle, the decline and recovery of the bald eagle. This is a conservation success story, and fortunately one that does have a happy ending, but one that very easily could have had a very tragic ending. Now, most of you at home are probably familiar with the bald eagle. They are very recognizable. They're very iconic. They're our national symbol, after all, but you may not be as familiar with the story of the bald eagle and how we went from the brink of extinction to the point where we are now. So let's just jump right into this story. We don't have a lot of pre-settlement data, so a lot of old numbers that tell us how the population of bald eagles were in Kentucky. We can only assume that we were home to a healthy and stable population. But that population experienced widespread and drastic decline. Original decline probably dated back to the very early 1900s, and this decline became very, very drastic and dramatic in about the 1940s, 1950s, and 1960s. There were three major reasons for bald eagle decline here in North America. One is habitat loss and habitat degradation. Habitat degradation is where a habitat is still there, but it gets changed in such a way that it's no longer suitable. So bald eagle habitat, they mostly eat fish, so they need to nest near large bodies of water. So large streams, large rivers, and lakes. They also nest very high up in tall, mature trees, so they do need to have some wooded areas close by. So think about this, for example. If you have a lake that was once untouched by people, and you come in and you do a lot of logging, and then maybe you put a neighborhood next to the lake, or maybe you put a subdivision, maybe you put a shopping mall, maybe you put a factory next to the lake, that habitat has changed to the point where it will no longer be suitable for bald eagles or other species of wildlife as well. So habitat loss, and habitat degradation was a huge issue that bald eagles and it might seem hard to believe, but illegally killed their livestock. Whether or not there was a whole lot of truth to that, they, they probably weren't. But bald eagles do mostly uh, eat fish in there. Uh, but that was a widespread belief that led, uh, unfortunately, to a lot of bald eagles being killed illegally. So that certainly wasn't helping anything. But probably in the 1940s, 1950s, and 1960s, probably the number one cause for the decline of the bald eagle is right here in my hand. This is DDT. A lot of you probably heard of DDT, but you may not really be familiar with what DDT actually is and what it was used for. DDT was a chemical that was very good at killing and warding off, keeping away insects and bugs. DDT was used very widespread in other parts of the world to help rid uh, mosquitoes and help prevent mosquito transmitted diseases like yellow fever and malaria. But in North America, DDT was mostly used in agricultural practice. This was used to help protect and help treat people's crops, so vegetable crops mostly. Any kind of plant life that people wanted to protect uh, from damage due to bugs and insects, you would have considered using DDT. It was very effective at that. Probably widespread use, probably with the assumption that one, it was safe for people to be using, safe for farmers to be using. Secondly, with the assumption or maybe just the hope that it didn't have any negative consequences on the environment or on our wildlife. Unfortunately, especially that second assumption, was, was a very incorrect assumption. DDT, unfortunately, made its way from those crops into the waterways where it uh, became toxic for a lot of fish. Now, we, we mentioned a moment ago that bald eagles mostly live near the water and their number one food supply is fish. So what it actually did was it poisoned the bald eagles' food supply. DDT did not kill this directly. It actually poisoned them indirectly. It got into the waterways, it polluted our water, it got into the fish, and then when the bald eagles would consume the fish, they 
still didn't kill the bald eagle outright. What it did in a very peculiar way, and we're going to look right over here, it affected them during a very important time of the year, during the next season. We have our bald eagles here in, in the vineyard. What DDT actually did was, this is an exact of a, a bald eagle. I drop it, no worries. What DDT did was cause bald eagles to lay abnormally thin eggshells, so unusually thin eggshells. That's the problem, because when the eagle would go to incubate those eggs, we often say they sit on them, they kind of lie on them, they lie on them and put a little bit of their body weight on them to keep them warm. Those eggshells were so thin that they were actually cracking and breaking. So that is actually how DDT affected bald eagle numbers and bald eagle populations. The eagles were no longer able to hatch out any young. And actually, in Kentucky, we had no known nesting pairs of bald eagles from 1949 until 1986. Just think about that. 1949 to 1986. That is a huge chunk of time to not have any bald eagles, and that's just for Kentucky. and having young and raising young. That is, so you've got those three things working together. You've got habitat loss and habitat degradation. You still have a lot of illegal killing going on in the 1940s and 1950s. And then once DDT began to be used widespread, that caused the bald eagle to nearly go extinct. And bald eagle numbers bottomed out in the early 1960s. So how did we begin our road to recovery? How did the bald eagle go? from the brink of extinction to, to the point that we luckily get to enjoy and experience today? Well, one, better protection, and better protection of natural resources, including habitat and nesting habitat for the bald eagle. Secondly, DDT's use in North America was banned in 1972. So starting in 1972, you would no longer be able to purchase or use DDT in North America. The following year, the bald eagle was listed as federally endangered under the Endangered Species Act. So it gets a lot of nat uh, national attention, as it deserved, and so starting then, no longer uh, worrying about DDT, better protection, better protection. And slowly but surely, the bald eagle begins its road to recovery now. But for 1972, we still have 14 years until the bald eagle was reestablished as a nesting species here in Kentucky. But finally, in 1986, one pair, we're talking about two adult birds, one pair down in western Kentucky at Ballard Wildlife Management Area. They were unsuccessful a few nesting seasons in a row. But finally, in 1989, they were able to fledge two eaglets. So in Kentucky, that's kind of a thing off point. Restoration. All right, we have one pair on the Ballard Wildlife Management Area, 1989. That's our jumping off point for successful uh, re emergence of bald eagles in Kentucky. What I have here are a couple figures. We're going to talk about kind of how we get these numbers, but hopefully everybody can see this. This is tracking starting with that one pair in 1986. If you follow along, you see slowly but surely our numbers start. We really start getting some traction right about here. And then you look at this drastic jump in these more recent years. And to kind of break that into chunks for you, maybe this will be a little bit easier to follow if everybody could see this. So in 1986, one nesting pair. 1996, we have 12. In 2000, we have 23. 2010, we have 84, so a big jump there. And as of last year in 2019, we had 187, so quite a jump. And this is all, this is all during my lifetime right here, quite a jump from 1 to 187. So you might be wondering, how do we get these numbers? Well, as, as numbers start to really, really rebound uh, all across the lower 48, so the bald eagle, which was once listed as federally endangered in 1995, that, that status has changed to threatened. So it's still federally protected 
uh, but, it's, but the numbers are doing so well that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service decides they're going to change the status, but still obviously provide all the protection uh, that bald eagles need. And then in 2007, the bald eagle was completely removed from the endangered species list. Bald eagles will be continued to be monitored for 20 years after that, so until uh, 2027, so another seven years. And that is a huge part of what our biologists right here at the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources do each and every year. A lot of monitoring work, survey work that they do, and a lot of that work they do is directly to monitor bald eagles. And a huge part of what they do is to keep track of how many nesting pairs that we have in the state each and every year. And again, this is just, if you want to see the success of the rebound of bald eagles in one little frame and one snapshot, just look at this graph right here and look at how much progress has been made since 1986 to, uh, well, this one, forgive me, this one's from 2018, but as of 2019, we had 187. If you're curious about where most of those are found in the state, here's a map. This is going to show you every little black silhouetted eagle there is a confirmed known nesting pair. And you can see that most of those, in fact, they all start to run together down here in the western part of the state. This is the land between the lakes area between Kentucky Lake and Lake Barkley. That is some of the best, as you could probably tell from this graph, that is some of the best eagle habitat in the entire state. 30 or at least 30 of those nests are in the land between the lakes area. But the really neat thing over the last five to 10 years has been we have slowly but surely had eagles establish nests further and further into the eastern, or excuse me, into the central portion of the state. And then ultimately, we have had them come all the way over into the eastern portion of the state. So that is the good news. Again, this is a conservation success story. And the great news is that now we have more bald eagles in Kentucky than we've ever had at any other point in history since we've been keeping track. There's never been a better time, a better opportunity for you at home to get out in the wild and actually see a bald eagle. Now, I don't want you, we're gonna talk about him in just a minute, I don't want you thinking that you have to come to the Salado Center, although I'd love for you to come to the Salado Center. You don't have to come here or go to a zoo or an aquarium to see a live bald eagle. A lot of you at home that are watching right now, you've probably already had your own sightings. I've seen, I've been very lucky through my work and through the fact that I fish and I have a boat so I'm on the water a lot. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of bald eagles. I still get excited when I see one. It's kind of an exhilarating thing. So if you've never seen a bald eagle in the wild or you've never seen a bald eagle in the wild in Kentucky, there's never been a better point in time than right now. So I encourage you, put forth a little bit of effort Maybe do a little research to where, uh, to, the, the, to the closest body of water near you where you're confident that there are going to be bald eagles and get out there and try to spot one uh, for yourself. Before we change gears a little bit, and we're going to take a closer look at this guy and talk about him. Do we have, Nikki, do we have any questions coming in? Yes, All right, very good. Oh, okay. Very good question. The question is, were bald eagle populations disproportionately impacted in the state of Kentucky, or was the issue nationwide? So in other words, was it just for some reason in Kentucky, did we experience a drastic decline, or was this an issue nationwide? That's a great question. This issue occurred in the lower 48, so forget about Alaska and forget about Hawaii, but in the lower 48, this was a major, major issue that the entire uh, lower 48 states did encounter. So that's an excellent question. We also have another one, Aubrey, like, you know, why are bald eagles called bald eagles? Why, Aubrey, why are bald eagles called bald eagles? Well, that's a great question, and we'll, we'll kind of get a look at this one here while I answer this. Even though they have a white head, then they might look like they're kind of bald. Bald would mean hairless in this case, actually it's not why they're called bald eagles. Bald comes from an old English word, which was actually spelled B-A-L-D-E, it had an E on the end, that means white. So you could say that the, the, the name has to do with their head, because they do have a white head. The scientific name of the bald eagle is Haliaetus leucocephalus. That literally means white-headed sea eagle. So they're called a bald eagle because the, the old school uh, definition of bald, B-A-L-D-E, was white. Great question. 
It looks like we have one. Do we have golden eagles in Kentucky? So actually, yes, we do have golden eagles in Kentucky. They're not a nesting species, so they're not a species that we have here year round like the bald eagle. They nest in Canada. So if you see a golden eagle in Kentucky, it's probably going to be during the winter time because they don't nest here. But yes, we do have them in Kentucky. All right. Oh, and okay. Sorry, you're you're seeing me divert my attention away from you. But we, I'm, I'm I'm trying to get some of your questions. You're asking really good questions. How old is the bald eagle behind me? This is a great transition because we were going to talk about him anyway. We'll go ahead and get a look at him. We'll talk about this eagle. This is the Salado Center's non -re non releasable, meaning that he's been injured bald eagle. He lives here because he could no longer survive in the wild with his injury. He actually suffered a wing fracture. If you tuned into my raptor program a couple weeks ago, you'll remember that the American kestrel that I had on my hand also had a wing fracture. And just like that kestrel, he had surgery. But unfortunately, his surgery was not successful. So he can't fly. One of the first questions we get asked when people come to this exhibit, as you'll notice, there's no roof on the exhibit. Why doesn't he fly out of there? Well, he doesn't fly out of here because unfortunately he can't fly at all. And if you're a bald eagle that can't fly anymore, there's no way you're going to be able to survive. And that's why he lives here. As far as how old, he is going to be seven years old this year. We got him when he was two years old. So the neat thing was he didn't look like that. We, we just talked about golden eagles. A lot of people don't realize that bald eagles until they reach age five, they look like this. If you want to come look at this sign here, this, this is a picture of what they look like. They don't have a bright white head yet. They don't have a bright white tail. And they don't have a yellow beak yet. That's what they look like. So a lot of people, if you've seen a bird that you knew based on its size that it had to be an eagle, but it looked like that, and especially if it was during the summertime, then what you've seen actually is a juvenile bald eagle as opposed to a golden eagle. So it was really neat for us as a staff and for our visitors, especially our visitors who come uh, regularly and come every year, to watch him kind of transform uh, from that uh, plumage that he had as a juvenile into what you see now. And he'll look like this for the rest of his life. Again, he turns seven years old this year. Bald eagles in the wild live 20 to 25 years on average, so they live quite a while. In captivity, they can live quite a bit longer. And it wouldn't be surprising for this guy behind me to live 35 plus years in captivity. So at age seven, he's still pretty young. Yeah. All right, no more questions? Okay, well, the last thing I wanna talk about, you might be wondering how you can become involved in the conservation work that we do. I mentioned all of the, the hard work that our biologists do to monitor species like the bald eagle to make sure that we never encounter another uh, situation like we encountered back in the 1960s and 1970s. You might consider, you've heard us mention this in some of our other Facebook Live sessions, you might consider researching and looking into joining Kentucky Wild. Kentucky Wild is a new program our agency has launched that directly supports the species in Kentucky that are not hunted, fished, or trapped. Species like bald eagles and other raptors, songbirds, mussels, pollinators, bats, all those important things that don't always get the spotlight. Now, the bald eagle did get the spotlight, uh, but we still have to monitor it to make sure that we never have another issue like we did. A lot of the monitoring efforts that our biologists do, this program directly supports those. So if you think that you might want to become involved uh, and directly help to support the conservation work that our biologists do, the very important work that our biologists do, then I would recommend researching Kentucky Wild. You can actually go to the website right there and learn more about that program. And it looks like we've got a few more questions that have rolled in that I'll go ahead and get. What is the strength of a bald eagle? So how strong is a bald eagle? Well, with those talons that you can probably see, those talons are very large and they're very strong. So bald eagles, their life literally depends on their ability to grab hold of something, usually a fish, not let it get away and kill it so that they can then eat it. And with each one of those talons, a bald eagle can squeeze about a thousand pounds of pressure per square inch with each talon. Now I want to put that in perspective for you. The average adult man can squeeze about a hundred pounds. The average adult woman can squeeze about 60 pounds. So a bald eagle with one talon can squeeze about 10 times stronger than what a pretty strong guy can squeeze. So when I say the talons are sharp, but they're very, very strong. They're used for an important purpose. That's how they grab their food. And that's how they secure their food and kill it so they can eat it. That's what they use, and that's how strong they are. A thousand pounds of pressure per square inch. And looks like 
where can we find bald eagle nesting information? So if you go on our website, you should be able to access a nesting report that's put together by our biologists to learn more about uh, some of the nesting, or some of the monitoring of the nesting that happens right here in Kentucky. You should be able to find that if you go to fw.ky.gov. And do we have any last minute questions before we wrap up? Looks like we've got all the questions. I appreciate you all uh, taking the time to send in your questions. You asked some very good questions. I hope that you've enjoyed, he, he roused for you there. I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the decline and the recovery of the bald eagle. This is a conservation success story, one that does have a very happy ending. I think it's one that illustrates how important it is that we stay in touch with wildlife and stay in touch with natural resources and pay attention. Uh, you know, people, it was because of people that, that, that we knew that something was wrong. People weren't seeing bald eagles as frequently as they used to. It was because of people's observations and people's, people's care and concern for bald eagles that they got the attention they needed before it was too late. So I think it highlights the importance of how we pay attention to our wildlife and nature and uh, be mindful of, of the way that all of us all of us in our everyday lives make decisions that do impact the environment and do impact Kentucky's ecosystems and habitats and all of our great wildlife that we have right here in the state of Kentucky. If we don't have any more questions, thanks again for tuning in to today's Facebook Live session. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that maybe now you, you have a greater appreciation for the bald eagle, understanding what this species has gone through over the last several decades in this country. Thanks again and have a great day.